How you going? Welcome back to another random astrobiological universe sandbox 2 session. Um, excuse the crappy lighting ring I have, but uh, I work on zero budget, so that's what you got. Guys, some lights, but you don't need to see my face. What you need to see is this beautiful, spacey goodness. And today I'm terraforming the moon. This is I've got about halfway along. Well, I've at least given it water. Those um, all that in the background. That's Earth. Good old Mother Earth. And all this in the background is just uh, I think Jupiter satellites. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's Jupiter and all those moons. They show up in a simulation. Right now, where's the moon? Whoop. We want the moon. It's all about the moon today. I'll get rid of these horrible freaking selection circles because they give me the irrits. Goodbye. See ya. Right. Anyway, I'm in a real terraforming mood lately. I'm either blowing planets up or creating new ones or making other ones habitable within a simulation. But anyway, moon. Now. Our sister body on our journey through the universe and one day it, uh, it may look like this who knows just imagine um, flying from earth and you look at the window of your um, SpaceX space liner and uh, home sweet home you're returning home maybe there are cities on the moon maybe there are ports and 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 ocean dwellers there could be like um, floating cities there's all this water here there's all this space now or humanity to expand to. And honestly, it makes honestly it just makes a whole lot more sense for us to be looking to the moon first than Mars. Um, yeah, Mars is getting a lot of the attention, and you know, Mars is great, cool. I like Mars. I'm not against Mars, but Moon and, and places like Venus even. But the Moon is obviously the first step. I mean, just imagine this new world. Right, so I'm going to try and create this new world for you and we're going to do this by first of all getting looking uh, uh, let's load up the solar system all right that's solar system go away that's the information earth let's zoom in on earth there's a moon there yes it is all right good old learner where are you And there's the moon we all know and love. A meaty impact there long ago. Nice. The highlands and the lowlands. It's a pretty good simulation this one. I'm not sure how well this video is turning out right now, but I'm really just crossing my fingers hoping for the best. Let's get rid of all this messiness around. I don't want to see that. We'll get rid of it. We know what the moon's called, we don't see the levels. And we'll get rid of all this junk here. Adios, adios, and adios. So, moon, earth. Let me first of all do one other thing. In OBS, uh, no, hang on. Whoops. Capture cursor, that way you can see what I'm pointing to. All right, let's go back to, uh, yep, all right. So it's earth, and it's moon. As you may be well aware, we're going to turn the moon into something that looks a little bit like this. All right, let's go. First, what would you do? Okay, obviously, one of the first big steps in terraforming a world is to uh, give it some atmosphere and some water. And one way of doing both at the same time is to launch some icy asteroids or comets at it. So we're going to launch uh, a small moon. I'll pause it just for a second. Right. It would have been cast in from the asteroid belt. There we are. There's that asteroid there. Let's just lock onto that. Whoop. We'll do a few actually. But from fairly low orbit so that's impact uh, isn't too destructive. See the shadows there? Right. Three asteroids heading into... Right, so now what we can do 
So we, we can change the composition of these asteroids, which is a... Whoop, where are we? Yeah, we'll change that one first. We want water, so... What's this one called? Your test the yuppie. Made up made by simulation. Composition, we can change... Make it watery. Basically, a lot of the asteroids are essentially just chunks of ice anyway. So, that's not out of the bounds of possibility. This one here, Viren, do the same thing. Water. And... Aeantus. Pretty cool names. Alright. Water. A little bit of volume. And hence the impact factor. So, that's why I'm dropping it from a fairly low orbit. This one here may actually be a little bit too far away. So, what we're going to do is move it... A bit. Oh, okay, now let's pretend that. Alright, you've got uh, it's a future, it's a near future, and the asteroid belt's being mined and um, exploited for all it's worth. That's nothing wrong with that, really. Nothing out there that cares. Um, but uh, as I say, some asteroid freighters, I guess um, the future equivalent of a tugboat, has brought these things back from the asteroid belt to uh, a low orbit around the moon. So, speed, wouldn't be too, too much. Speed, let's, uh, yep, that can be lowered. Nothing really matters too much, but let's see what happens. So, first of all, you right now I can increase the speed a little it's gonna look pretty impressive when it hits oh, I like this part right. Right, already starting to break up you can see um, as they approach the moon, they're starting to fall apart. Fragments coming apart, coming away. And we got impact one and impact two. And Tassiapi is going to hit soon after. So that's what happens. These icy bodies hit the moon, explode. There's a lot of heat and um, force releasing um, water and material dispersing across the moon, some of it out in the space, as you can see here, fragments shooting out in the space. But the moon's gravity isn't too low that it's not gonna hold on to some of this matter. A lot of it's being flung out in the space. As we've all seen from a, a video of the astronauts bouncing around on the moon, it's got a very low gravity, about one sixth of ours. There's a fragment there, a part of it. Let's catch you, send you back to the moon. Uh, distance from, no, it's heading to the sun. We'll forget about that for now. But, see this, this tail forming behind the moon? That's an indication that, whoops. All right, where's the moon? I've lost the moon, excuse me. for a second. Good, so as I was saying, <coughs> we'll forget that piece here, it's flying off in the outer space well, towards our sun, but because the moon uh, has somewhat low gravity and um, the magnetic field, water that has been um, dispersed by these impacts is being vented into space or stripped by solar winds into space. And it's tail, it's a, it, the moon's essentially a giant comet at the moment. That's what it would pretty much look like. I'm not saying neat tidy is that, but you get the picture. But if I can speed time up a little bit. Yeah, speed time, uh, slow time down a bit, rather. Right. 
but uh, you got some heat. I think provided by the impact still, it's uh, not sure how long, how much time has passed. But we'll add more objects. I want something a bit bigger and meatier this time. Um, random small moon. Let's put it. Let's bring that in. Put it here. Now we can change the composition of this moon as well. That's what we're going to do. We want something very icy. Obviously, being a moon, it's not going to be too watery. But uh, just let's pretend that we found something out in the asteroid belt. Uh, oh, we can change the colour. Oh, well, there you go. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, I think I can do that, but right, we're going to uh, composition, composition, getting back to work, back to work, Benny. Increase the, whoop, greatly increase the water content of this, let's call it a, a, a dwarf moon, not really a dwarf planet. The moon doesn't rate as a dwarf planet, it's a little bit too small. But, okay, so. Uh, for much effort and expense this thing's been brought into close proximity with the moon and we are now going to right let's get going have to change the distance from the moon a little bit just to ch just to cheat slightly oh, that's how oh it is moving okay just very very slowly now I can change right okay yeesh and henceforth begins a big meaty freaking impact I'm slide it down for your viewing pleasure <laughs> I like it. Now, there's a lot of heat being given off there. And this material is being blasted across the moon's surface, and if the moon's gravity can hold on to all that some of it, it will retain a little bit of water, and this will provide some atmosphere as well. Speed things up in real time. Okay, there you can see pockets of water. These craters filling up here. This is this is how it works. It may not last for long, but it will take. It will be a gradual process. Obviously, not as quick as this. Speed it up. Venting a lot of water. I've got to try and stop that somehow. I've done it before. How do I do it? What you got to do is okay. There are raw materials here now. Is any of the moon? Is it possible to right? Let's pretend. Okay. Now this is which will be phase one of the project, the terraforming project. And what you will next do is something like um, give us some atmosphere. Uh, thickness atmosphere artificially and that would in uh, a, a real life solution would be something like producing uh, CFC chlorofluorocarbon chloro generating plants that just basically just pollute the the heck out of the atmosphere and um, well what we want is a, is a runaway greenhouse effect on the moon so that's bad on earth we don't want that here but we, we would love it here so that's what we do. We, we just uh, well, you can't actually build factories in this, but uh, let's just say that we are. Let's pretend that we are. Right. So when we temperature, temperature, atmosphere, mass, we'd start pumping all kinds of stuff into the into the uh, across the moon, and this would create an atmosphere. For, it will become an atmosphere over time. Now that's, that's a very gradual process. 
I'm speeding it up uh, greatly, of course. But the atmospheric pressure is still um, a minute percentage of a pascal. Let's head towards one atmosphere, or let's say we get to 0.7 of an Earth atmosphere. Not seven atmospheres, Ben. 0.7. We don't want seven atmospheres because that just wouldn't happen. But the moon now has some atmosphere. But we also want a magnetic field because, as you may see, the magnetic field prevents a lot of this uh, stuff from being stripped out into space. Yeah, that's also what's happening. Uh, the intense heat and surface is not helping. A lot is boiling away. We need to cool that down. I've got an idea to do that. Yeah, let's pretend the human beings have uh, progressed uh, far and wide in the, the next few hundred years. And we find ways to place giant objects or shields in front of other giant objects or shields. Let's pretend we can erect uh, a shield of sorts in front of the moon. That's what I'm going to do. Tetrahedron, monolith, phantom zone, new horizon spacecraft. I oh, just put a well, okay, an object the size of the moon in front of the moon, or well, slightly bigger than the moon. We can, we can increase its radius. That's what I'll do. Where the heck is the moon? Moon. Let's put that. No, we're not going to launch it, Ben. No. We're going to add. Kick on launch. Why? 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 Would that be a good idea? Would that even work? Hmm. Right, let's put that thing in front of our moon. Excuse the noise in the background. To um, increase its distance, percent of distance. Uh, let's make this thing flat. If I could make it flat, I would. What would be ideal? It's something like a flat Earth. Right. If I use this Actions. Right. How would that work? How the heck would that work? I have no idea. Right. Probably wouldn't. Let's get rid of that stupid idea. Right. Get rid of it. Go away. Right. Where were we? Okay, so we're at the moment here. It's venting atmosphere. Speed time up. Okay. Oh, good. What right there? Why is it doing that? Right. Maybe time's going to cool down. That's what we want. Earth will be getting um, pelt with a lot of this uh, runoff. So this would be affecting climate on Earth too. It'd be a, a ring forming around Earth of ice. And it's just water. It's sent out in space, freezes. And Earth's gravity will capture it. You can see the moon starting to cool down. Looks like a bong ball now, doesn't it? Okay. It's heading up still. I want you to cool down, moon. Please cool down. Yeah. Simulation is going as fast as it can. We're speeding time up. We've just uh, settled these uh, events in motion. Now we're just looking back and see what happens. It's going to cool down sooner or later.
feeling this isn't going to work. I'm having trouble holding up all this water that's flying away. How can we get rid of that? I know what we do. Right. Magnetic field. No composition. Remember there's magnetic field. Oftentimes the magnetosphere is what? Well, it's actually what keeps let's get a strong magnetic field. And that can be achieved artificially by increase it. Whoop. Crikey. That's a bit too big. how that would affect Earth. We change the composition of the moon slightly. We'll cheat a little bit. Increase. Oh. No. Turn it over time. It's got this lovely layer of water. Ah, put that back where it was. I was lowering the silicate levels. Iron. About to say. It's got a Iron core, the motor wave. Let's pretend it's a bit more than usual. That was helped to make magnetic field a little bit. Hydrogen. Pump some hydrogen into. Oh, we don't want that. Okay. Put it back where I was. Alright, now we're getting there. It's cooling down. It's like a charred mess of it. Magnetic sphere, turn it off. Still melting water. Hmm, because it's so hot, that's what it is. <sighs> okay, this is an engineering project, this one. What's going on there? Those craters there. Gonna pause. Added. Let's start again. Do. Right, where are we? Um, the, come on, where are you? There's the moon. Somewhere. Whoops. Oh, come on. Okay. Pauses for a minute. Uh, time for lunch break. All right, back. Just had to uh, take care of some things. Uh, had to get a coffee. It spilled all over my desk because me. So uh, yeah, it was fun. You didn't hear the, uh, the new and creative swear words that I just came up with. All right. So okay, well we started again because I just couldn't quite get that atmosphere to it to retain its atmosphere. So. Yeah, I can't remember what I did last time. I've done it before. I'll show you what I've done. I've created, you know, what you saw at the beginning. Let's go back. Where the heck are my simulations? Right. They're all gone. Ah, uh, okay. And now I created... Why well, didn't create the moon? The universe created the moon, but I managed to wait for the computer. So there was this. It uh, it's not quite Earth-like just yet, but uh, there's liquid water staying there, and that's a huge start because uh, water is a source of so many things, including life, and also it's a source of a fuel for space travel. Um, it drives climate. 
the moon would have its own climate. So yes, we want, we want, we want the moon to become watery. So let's create, let's see if we can do it again. Round two. It's a sort of very interesting um, exercise. Ways of transforming an alien planet. So let's go back to Earth. Yeah. Come on, the computer. Jeez, really? Gold. And my computer isn't incredible, so I don't know how the capturing quality is, if the video is jerky or not. And if it is, I apologize, what can I say? But I'm doing my best. Hopefully, entertaining you at the same time. Alright, okay, so moon. Let's get rid of all this. Uh, junk here. I don't care about simulation overlays and labels and stuff. We know what the moon's called. All right, all right, moon. Excuse me. Now, perhaps if this time I'll just start with less asteroids launched at the moon. Random asteroid comets. Comets are generally watery. Biggest one, Halley's Comet, uh, 5.5 kilometers in radius. Uh, Shoemaker Levi, excuse me, 700 meters. Uh, Swift Tuttle, 13 kilometers, that's a large one. Apophis, a near Earth asteroid, that's tiny, not worth it. I mentioned 10 meters, uh, no, let's see, 41 meters, huh, why? Let's go off this one here, uh, two, 2015 BZ509. Uh, it's 13.4 kilometers, so maybe just one or two of those. Let's put, let's pause the game. Let's get close to the moon. Let's pretend our asteroid freighters have been out doing their thing, have found this random comet. Right, and let's put 2015 BZ059 as close as we can to the moon. Just two, all right? Let's start with two. Let's see what happens. Remember what happened last time, Ben? You got greedy. And greed sometimes is not good. Alright, so uh, we'll slow down the time steps. Uh, let's just make it crazy slow, just in case I'll stuff it up and we can't see anything happening. Right. You can see our two uh, our comments there. Let's first of all get rid of all the stuff here. And go. Yeah. So I've got it on incredibly slow. You can see they're pretty close. You can see the, the shadow being cast by these comets. Let's spare things up a little bit. I'm speeding up the time steps now. Right. Right. They're coming in. Incoming is number one. Look at that, doesn't look pretty. Oh, it's coming in, that's the shadow there, it's getting closer. Where's number two? Alright, oh, okay. Get a comet side view. As it crashes into the moon. Alright, let's spare things up a tad. Alright, in they come. Incoming! Oh. Wait for it, wait for it. Okay. Close your eyes, baby. I can't, I can't not look. sense of relief there. So now you see water and atmosphere being added to the moon hopefully. Less heat given off because I've decided to uh, drop them from a, a closer distance. 
launch at a very gentle speed, they'll break up. Some ejector is given off, but you can't do much about that. And here comes number two, right about now. Okay. Right now. It's pretty lucky, isn't it? I mean, seeing that from Earth. The folks from Earth, what would they think? What are they doing? I'd be a little bit worried myself. Right, so. We've added speed time up a little bit. Right. Slow time down again. Let's see where the moon's at in terms of moon. Moon. God. Gee whiz. Must have been added. But the temperature would have been raised. Yes, temperature is now 18.4. See? Now, this ties into the uh, presence of uh, the effect of albedo on planetary climate. And albedo is the, uh, the amount of reflectivity of the body uh, from 0 to 1. Uh, reflectivity means the amount of solar radiation or insulation yeah, that is. Um, either absorbed or reflected by the planet. The planet with, uh, say, lots of snow covering it has a, has a high albedo because it reflects a lot of sunlight, obviously, because it's white. But if, say, if a planet was dark or, say, artificially darkened, you could um, change its albedo. And one way to artificially darken the moon would be to introduce, it would be a slow process, but to introduce things like black lichens or black bacteria, which have been gen genetically engineered to... Um, survive in very hostile conditions and if some, some if some atmosphere has been added via these impacts um, they could take hold and this would probably work better on a place like Mars which which already has an existing atmosphere so um, it would be quite so harsh for these uh, organisms these extreme falls but bear in mind that they are genetically modified unless we're living in a hypothetical future right now in this simulation and mankind has developed the ability to produce microbes or organisms that can live pretty much bloody anywhere. So let's say it's living on the moon right now. It's dark. Albedo is like there's a lot of heat being absorbed. So the effect of temperature is a lot higher. Okay. And again, as before, I would want to increase the atmosphere of the moon. Now these comets, what they would have done is add water. This is possibly a little bit too much water. This is say 1% of the moon's mass. We have a global ocean covering the moon. That's, that's what it will look like essentially. And we give it an atmosphere as well by increasing surface pressure. Really cranking up now. I would use my tactic before of building basically gigantic polluting machines that burp out lots and lots of crap into the atmosphere and artificially essentially create a runaway greenhouse effect on the moon, which would thicken this atmosphere and trap a lot of heat. So, over time, let's say we got to points. Now, I'm guessing there's only so much that the moon can hold because it does have low gravity compared to us, and there's not much I can do about that. I could really cheat and increase its gravity, but then that'll be kind of well just cheating and be no fun. So we've got to inject a little bit of realism into it. But you can see, oh, I don't know if you can see very well. See against this uh, Milky Way here, some atmosphere has formed there. It's going down somewhat though. Now I surmise that that would be because oh, come on. Whoop. Wrong button, okay, composition uh, temperature. Where is Ah Does the moon have a magnetosphere? 
Now, magnetosphere can be uh, artificially generated. Um, and then that is an engineering prog uh, uh, problem, plain and simple. I'm not sure of the exact uh, method. Let's just say we have these gigantic uh, magnetic field generators placed in strategic positions around around the moon. Right, so that would and a magnetic field would also help greatly reduce um, water loss and atmosphere loss because a lot of uh, in, in the case of Venus, Venus lost a lot of water over the course of millions of years uh, because due to lack of magnetic field, it had no protection of solar rays which actually broke down and stripped off a lot of water from the atmosphere leaving the Venus we know today which has a water content in its atmosphere of about oh gee uh, well, less than one percent, a fraction of one percent. Okay, I've got a magnetic field appearing here. Now, and already we've increased similarity to Earth to sixty-seven percent. You can see here, and the likelihood of life appearing is twelve point six percent. Now, it's a speculative index, but uh, it's already done pretty well for the Moon. What I'd like to do is get rid of some of that water because it's just a little bit too watery. We want to we make it pretty comfortable for human beings. And we're not in that marathon just yet. So the magnetosphere is there. You can see it. I'll turn it off so it's not in the way of what I'm trying to show you. Now what we can do is, how's the temperature of the moon going? Yeah, right. It's 18.2%. We could, we could increase the atmosphere a little bit. Those, uh, those pollution machines, those pollution plants are pumping out gunk in the atmosphere at a rate of knots. The albedo is uh, reflecting a lot of sunlight. If I was to raise the albedo a little bit, it would change. We don't want the effect of temperature to be too low, obviously, because then we are in trouble. Surface pressure has gone up. Surface pressure has the effect of retaining heat. So that's what we're trying to do. There's still a lot of residual heat from these impacts. I could generate more. Another means by which um, bodies produce heat is not just um, being heated from the sun, but also a thing called, uh, where are we? I saw it here, that's tidal, a tidal energy. What that means is that, I don't really know that what tidal effects? Okay. Totally lock it. But when um, a body such as the moon orbits the Earth, it's always isn't exactly circular. So it's we have to okay turn the trails back on. Trails, labels. But, get rid of that. Okay, so we've got. Now the moon's there, take my word for it. And the moon goes around the Earth, but its orbit isn't, as we know, perfectly circular. It's somewhat elliptical. And this means that gravitational stresses on the moon uh, differ over time, and this creates flexing and um, squashing and bulging within the structure of the moon itself and this flexing creates frictional heat within the moon or the body orbiting whatever body and it generates that heat from within this is called tidal heating and where's the moon is that it there ah yeah so the moon likely generates a little of its own internal heat but not much other bodies in the solar system, such as uh, Europa and and uh, Enceladus, do experience tidal flexing and tidal heating due to the orbits around their their respective parents, our planets, Jupiter and Saturn. And so, um, yeah, they generate their own heat, and that's why they're considered to be such hot options for life appearing. There's an atmosphere loss here. We'll look out for it again. 
Yep, look, there it is. Okay. Starting to lose a little bit of atmosphere here. We don't want that. So we're going to start getting back to work. Get the bloody hell out of here on the moon. Right. We, want, we don't want water loss. That's bad. Water loss is a bad thing. Okay. I could decrease the amount of water the moon has. Okay, so it could look something like this. Do we have atmosphere loss? Atmosphere loss, where are you? Get lost. Let's move with that atmosphere, and it now has an atmosphere. Greenhouse effect. We need to decrease that. So it is make the effect of the greenhouse effect. No, it's not going to change. I can't change the greenhouse effect right now. Oh my god, it's not good. We keep on popping our atmosphere. That's. Short of changing the moon's distance um, and orbit around the Earth, we can't really do much about tidal powers now. I'm going to be semi-realistic in this video, and although we are in the distant future and we are terraforming the moon, um, I'm just going to assume that we aren't quite able to move the moon around yet. We move the asteroids around, but uh, snarky comments aside, I don't care. Right, so it's looking pretty good though bit of uh, outgassing here, you can see. We need to try and prevent that because eventually that'll mean the moon has no atmosphere or water at all and we're back to square one. So, atmosphere loss, where were you? Mass loss. The moon's magnetic axis. I'm going to artificially change that, obviously. And the moon's back to 67.9% similarity to Earth and a quite a high likelihood of, of life appearing, which is pretty good. But I want to get rid of that. I'll have to stop that, or there's going to be no nothing left for anything to use. Surface temperature. Perhaps I'll lower the temperature a little bit. The moon may need to be somewhat frigid. Doesn't seem to be having an effect right now. That's got to stop that. Atmosphere loss has to stop. Because all of this won't mean anything. If you can't hold on to it. It may last a few decades or centuries maybe, but alright, so what's the temperature of the moon at the moment? 8.31. Radiator power. Doesn't have any radiator power. The amount of energy per second absorbed. Parameters YW stands for the computer's slow. Let's move on. Right. Atmosphere. I need to stop atmosphere. Surface pressure 1.5 atmospheres. Perhaps if I get rid of a bit of atmosphere, maybe it's too much, and the moon literally can't hold on to it because of its gravity. So we have slightly lower atmosphere than Earth. Seem to be speed time up a little bit. Oh, okay, looks like we're in a bit of trouble here. Three 
increase, decrease surface pressure. Looks like it's having a trending effect. No, we don't want that actually. Let's give Earth, this the moon, one atmosphere. If I increase the magnetic field, that should have a substantial effect. Let's try that. So there's a magnetosphere. We need to really crank that up. How bad that would be for anything living on the moon on the moon pretty pretty beefy at the moment still losing atmosphere just won't go away come on now it's getting silly let's get back to where we were Now the moon needs to hold on to that atmosphere. Hmm, solutions anyone? Solutions anyone? Let's make this a part two. How can we make the moon hold this atmosphere? Uh, suggestions down below. Go right ahead. I'd love to hear them. What do you think? What do you think I should do? Because we've gotten pretty far. We've gotten this far. There's a lot of water here. Uh, the moon can be is now more habitable by human for people uh, for a variety of reasons. But it's going to lose atmosphere eventually, and we'll be back at square one if I can't stop this from happening. This stripping of the atmosphere. What can we do to surface heat. We can lower surface heat somehow. Maybe increase the albedo. Crank it right up, see what happens. It's reflecting all sunlight. Blimey. That's even worse. I have done I don't understand. No. Okay. It's losing a lot. All right, suggestions welcome. What do you guys think I should do to stop the moon, this newly terraformed moon, from losing all of this water and atmosphere? Suggestions in the comments section. I look forward to reading them. Anyway, it's um, been fun anyway. I'll stop this for now with this little cliffhanger situation taking place. We've got this moon, it's looking pretty good. But um, I can't have all of this being lost to outer space. Because that will look like the face of the moon, so to speak. All right? So, what do you think I should do?